Hey boys and welcome back to my Bleach Brave Series. Today we're doing a top 10 on the best moments of Bleach Brave Souls history. Now you might be wondering from the title, what does this mean? And it basically means anything in the game. It could be a character release, a character 6 star, it could be an update, an announcement, a banner release, a character release, anything can be included in this list. And I'm going to try and, uh, from my opinion, the 10 that I can remember. Obviously there's 4 years worth of stuff to go over, but... Uh, you, I might forget some, so if I missed something out that you remember that was hype, let me know in the comments below, and uh, let's start the video. Alright, number 10 is the first end of month banner, the first, the second 6% banner on global, the first end of month banner on global, which featured 5 new 5 stars, which we haven't seen in the game since, the most we've seen so far is 4, but this one included Nelio, uh, Noitora, Zyropolo, Kimpachi, and Mayuri. Now this was pretty much like one of the best banners to re-roll on, uh, everyone at the time was even new to the game or just started the game, right? Because I was like, I think it was like a month after the game's release, so I didn't re-roll. I probably should have, right? It would have been better. But, you know, we stuck to it. We only ended up getting Myri in like two kills, but uh, it was a good banner. Uh, I remember, f well, who else was in it? It was Mind Eisen. He was still like one of the best characters in the game at the time. Uh, Zyropo was also one of the best characters in the game. Nerio, same for her, and Noitora. So it was one of the best banners to pull on, honestly, for a new player. But there was also some uh, drama to it, or, or controversy, I guess, which was leading up to, which is why I was even more hype, especially for me, if you can even remember this. Uh, there was a rumor going around that someone at K-Lab said the next times 2 banner would be a swimsuit banner, right? Which, you know, the swimsuit characters with, you know, Retsu, uh, Yoroichi, Soyafon, Ranku, that kind of banner. Uh, it was February at the time, so obviously it, it would have been at least four months before we at least got the swimsuit banner. So that led to a lot of people saying, you know what, maybe we're not going to get the banner for a couple of months. But no, surprise, surprise, we actually did get this banner on the end of month. And it was hype, it was good to see, and I, I think everyone pretty much pulled on that banner because it was the first good banner in the game, pretty much. Hopefully that did make sense, let's move on to number 9. Number 9 is Unahana's release, the manga Unahana. Uh, why is this included? Well... At the time, she was just broken, honestly. Uh, what, without a doubt, the best character in the game. Uh, still, uh, even now, still one of the best, you know, characters in the game. Uh, I myself think she has, like, one of the perfect kits as a, for a flurry character. Yes, Noritora beats her in PvP, but as a character, I still think Retsu's better. She has the heal, she has the DR, she has the Captain Killer, so does Noritora. But uh, Noritora doesn't have long reach and stuff like that. And she also has the heal on her special and strong attack with also the chance to instant kill. So I do think Retsu is the better character. Just in PvP, obviously, Noritora is made to counter Retsu. So Noritora is going to be better. Uh, just the nature of the game. But uh, Retsu, again, she was broken at the time of her release. Definitely worth the orbs that I spent for I spent 15k for her. And I, I don't regret it. She's a great character. And... Uh, and was it like she was a broken character on release, man? It's crazy, it's crazy. But let's move on to number eight. Number eight is Global finally catching up to JP. Now, if you didn't know, for the first two years of Global's release, we were always a month behind on banner wise, right? On JP, JP would get a, a banner, we'd get the previous banner that they got a month earlier. And it was pretty much like that. Um, the events were even worse, events took months to come out it was it was it was a bad time to play and it always it always came to the point where people would say jp gets treated better this is bullshit don't play global play jp jp gets all the better treatment and okay by, by doing this k-lab just got rid of everything right rid of all this hate between jp and global now it's just play whatever if you're japanese play japan if you're english or you know european uh, whatever whatever languages the global version can uh, include then play the global version so a, a definitely healthy environment nowadays and it also uh it also, it's more hype in my opinion. Now, when a banner gets released, we can all be hyped for the banner and not be, oh, nice. Vassal or Ishigo's coming out. Yes, let's say for a month. Kind of ruins the hype, but, you know, we have to wait 30 days or so to get it. But uh, definitely one of the best things that the game has done in terms of uh, quality of life updates, I guess you can say. So that is number eight. Let's move on to number seven. Number seven is the beginner challenges. Now, if you didn't know, the, way, the reason why this is included on the list is how k handled it. Uh, at the start, when it first got announced, it was only for new accounts uh, that were made after the update. So pretty much 90%, 100%, 99% of the player base at the time didn't get it, right? It was only new, new accounts, right? 
So a lot of players were pissed or annoyed. A lot of people were saying, oh, this is BS. Uh, Caleb between treating beginners better. Uh, people even started saying, oh, why don't veterans get stuff, right? And it, it kind of, you know, segregated the community from, oh, beginners, blah, 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 veterans, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it, again, another unhealthy uh, environment for the game. It's not, it's, it's not good for the game at all. But Caleb handled it nicely or quickly. So within at least two weeks, Caleb updated it. So now everyone gets it. And they also added more stuff for, you know, ad advanced and intermediate stuff like that. So a great update. Uh, made everyone happy. The characters included a free fire star. Uh, you get to pick a fire star at the start. I think it was like Orihime, Aizen, Ichigo, Chad, Uryu. Uh, those at the time were so good fire stars. So I myself picked Orihime because I was missing her. So they handled it poorly at the start, but they, you know, came up, they fixed the situation, and they made it better and stopped all the, the hate, I guess you can say. So that is why Beginner's Challenge is number seven. Number six is the 25 soul ticket update and also the five times, you know, event update i guess you can say um if you weren't playing before that at the time we could only have five tickets at a time obviously you could have more if you had uh soul tickets and stuff like that but it was a hassle to grind stuff five tickets at a time is terrible nowadays we have 25 would be nice if we had more but 25 is a, is a super number i'm fine with 25 and we also have now five times tickets on any event right uh last year we got five times tickets on uh, what was it, raids, and then now we got five time tickets on Droplet Zone and IT, which is nice, but, you know, the introduction to the 25 soul ticket update was nice, it means you can play the game more, and grind more, and just get a lot of stuff a lot quicker, so, that is why that is number six, uh, it was also good for new players, so they can grind story a lot faster, because now you got 25 tickets instead of five, so, hey, good update, man, good quality of life, one of the best quality of life updates we've gotten in the game so far. Number five is the full screen strong attack meta or meta change and the Yuki update, the new accessory that came out. So before the Yukis and stuff, uh, PvP characters were always, you know, Chappies and stuff like that. Grimjaw was like one of the best characters. Uh, normal attack characters, in my opinion, were always better because they had better accessories. Um, it was hard, kind of hard to build a SP based character because they want a lot of accessories to increase your SP like they're all with the attack and stuff and HP and Chappies and stuff like that. But after we started getting full screen strong attack, I believe Danga Ichigo was one of the first ones to get a full screen strong attack. But the real kicker is when Full Ring Ichigo came out. Full screen strong attack, frenzy, high SP, like 720, I think 650 or something like that. Because you know, we didn't have resurrected character. No, we didn't have 200 at the time then, right? High, high SP. He had frenzy. And then we also got the Yukis and all the new ways to get increased our SP. So it was a great update. It was kind of a power creep, but... A power creep that I think was good for the game. I myself didn't get full bring Ichigo for a while. I got him on the second anniversary. So I did go a few months without getting him. But it was a good update for the game. I think we got Inheritance Zone as well. And I remember when Ichigo actually came out. We also had Extreme Co-op. Which was still new at the time. And I remember Ichigo just completely wiping that whole thing. So yes it was power creep. But it was a power creep that were, that was good for the game in my opinion. It, it made the game a lot more fun. Because now most, most, of the, most of the characters. Like 99% of the characters I like, do get rid 90%. I say 90%. Let's just say 90% of the characters that get released nowadays have full screen strong attacks. And it just makes clearing a lot faster. The strong attacks also look nicer. So that is why that is number 5. Number 4 is the Climatic Battle Banner. This is one of the hypest banners to date on the game. Dangai, Ichigo, Baragon, and Aizen. Or Aizen, I guess you can say. Who was it crazy? Like I said before, I think Dangai, Ichigo is the first character to have a full screen strong attack. Uh, great attack stat. Great no attack string. He was definitely one of the hype. Uh, besides being Dan Gaishigo, right? This was the banner that everyone, re a lot of people re-rolled on. A lot of people started new accounts on. That just came to the game because Dan Gaishigo was a high boss character. Baragon was also like one of the most people's favorite of Spartans. I myself was hyped for him. And then there was also Heisen, who kind of got the short end of the stick in terms of uh, stats. Not stats, but in terms of skills and stuff like that and strong attack kits and stuff. But again, three great characters, three hype ass characters in the game. And that's why it earned its fourth slot. Number three is similar to the Climatic Battle. This one is actually the decisive battle, which featured Shuhei, funny enough. Uh, but the main thing was Vastlord or Four Hollow Chico and Segunda Etapa or Kura. Now, this was like the first hype banner. Uh, the previous end of months were, you know, Kisuke, Yoruichi, and Tessai. Uh, what was it? You know, the Spiders and Vast Captains, the first end of month. It was the, the legendary Captains one with Ishin, Senkei, Byakuya, and... Genrasai, but this was like the first hype banner that had like two of the most extremely weighted for characters, or weighted for characters in the game. Uh, this banner, my, in, in, myself included, this banner made me start playing the game every day again. Uh, I kind of got shafted on the Yellow Witchy banner. Kind of, I didn't stop playing. I logged in every day and stuff, but I wasn't playing as much as I I was now. But after that Ichigo came out, I got him in my second multi, and I grinded the game since, and I've been 
basically ever since I got that itch to go, I've been a full-time Bleach Blade Soul player, I guess you can say. But yeah, that earned its third slot. Let's move on to number two. Number two is the first anniversary of the game and included everything that came with it. I remember reading it on BraveSouls.fi on Reddit. And, bro, I was in class, IT class at the time, and I was excited, bro. I was hyped. I was telling my friends to download the game. I was telling them about it. Like, they didn't even care. They didn't even know, but I had to tell someone. I was that hype, right? So what did this anniversary include and why it's so high in this list? Well, basically, it included six stars, the new ways to power up characters made uh, OP, crappy characters that can patch you OP again, also gave us a lot of way to get new orbs, and that, you know, was a trend for the future of the game. It gave us raids, new hard content, nice, it was fun, and it also came with, uh, you know, raid characters every month, giving us orbs, it was great. And then we also got that new accessory event, which was great to get new accessories and stuff like that. I believe power hearts were in that event as well, I believe, don't quote me on that one. But it was great, but the main thing was the step up itself. Now, the step up had five steps or six steps, I believe, and every day would reset at 4 p.m. So, once you do all steps, you can't do any more and you have to wait till the next day. But every day at 4 p.m., GMT at least, uh, we'd get a, basically the first step 6% rate, 50 orbs, boys. 50 orbs every day for the rest of, for, the, for those two weeks. Every player was logging in, doing their MLT, and it was hyped. I got a lot of great cards, got Grimja, got Noitora. It was, it was crazy. I got a lot of. I uh, got a lot of Vassal Lord Ichigos, or Full Hollow Ichigos at the time, but I already had him, but still, it was hype. And then a week later, when round two came, we got the first six-star summonable characters, I guess you could say. First characters that came out that were actually, you know, that could go six-star. Uh, it was, it was who is it? They just got resurrected, actually, funny enough. It was Shinji, Soifon, and Gin. I myself didn't get any of them, but still, it was a hype banner. 15% rates, by the way. Let me remind you, 15% rates on the final step. That's crazy. Now, I know people might say, oh, there was a lot of characters. It was hard to get someone you want. They were kind of trash, but I'm going to have to disagree with you. The five, the any five at the time was great. It was new orbs. It was just, everyone just got a bunch of new characters. I think I walked away with like 35 stars at the time. It was crazy. Definitely one of the best anniversaries to date. Uh, if they did it now, kind of be a bit different because now, now, nowadays on the fourth anniversary, you're hunting for one character. So if they put a bunch of fillers, I'd be kind of annoyed. I think most people will, but for the time, when not everyone had like all these five stars, it was great. So that is why the first anniversary is number two. Now, number one, what could be number one? What could top the first anniversary? And this might surprise you. It was the announcement of the manga characters. Now, it's pretty easy to see why. People were asking, what is the future of Bleach Brace? So we will get, we just finished the full bring arc. We were getting kind of repeats of characters, tag team characters, stuff like that. People were scared for the future of Bleach. And that's when we got the news in the V-Jump, I guess, that got leaked, where it said manga characters are being developed and they're coming to the game. Now, for the, at least when it got announced, uh, obviously it wasn't, it was leaked, I guess you can say. Reddit, YouTube, as I remember, uh, it wasn't confirmed. We didn't know what was coming because the translations were somewhat wrong. There wasn't like an official translation. People were scared saying, don't, don't give me hope. Don't give me hope. Please tell me this is manga characters. And it was, it was hype. And this basically, you know, what now gives us hype banners every well, at the time when manga characters did come out it was basically a hype banner every three months that's something that everyone thought wouldn't happen happens we got all these manga characters now maybe some people take for granted uh bro hype manga characters were one of the best things that happened to the game in my opinion it increased the the lifespan of the game by so far two years right and i think we're still getting manga characters now we've got comfy on world stuff so uh, definitely, in my opinion, one of the hypest stuff to come from Bleach Bracelets. And that is pretty much it. Uh, hopefully, I didn't ramble on. I, this is like my third take for the video. So, hopefully, I didn't ramble on too much. Maybe I've repeated myself. Maybe I missed out on something. But again, uh, let me know if there's anything I missed out in the comments below. Uh, maybe I, I didn't say. Uh, let me think from the top of my head. Uh, I guess Kenpachi is really broken when he came out. He was also amazingly OP. Uh, I guess I didn't include him, but hey, this is my list. So. Watch yours, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.